Welcome back to the very first episode of the PM Perspective channel. Yeah, I know, I had a couple of videos out there. They've been out there for a few years. This isn't exactly the first episode, but I'm calling it the first episode because this is the first regular episode that, um, that I'll be putting out there. So I'm just celebrating the moment. So today, um, actually before we get into today's topic, uh, I just want to say uh, or remind you that for the remainder of March and for April, our topic of discussion is going to be all about how to get a project management job. If you have never had a project management job before and you're out there looking for your very first one, then I've got lots of stuff this month that uh, will be relevant for you that you'll find uh interesting. And if you have a project management job, but you're maybe looking for that next opportunity, there's going to be plenty of great stuff for you as well. So if you're in either one of those situations, there's a lot of really great information that I'll be sharing with you over the next few weeks. Today's topic is, um, I think it's apropos, it's, it's, it's answering the question, is project management right for me? And so it, it is a little more geared towards the person who is looking to break into project management who hasn't had that job before. What I want to cover today is we'll start with talking about some of the typical reasons people say they want to get into project management. I'll talk a little bit why some of those typical reasons are problematic and then we'll get into, I'll list off a number of traits that I think are very important for a person to be very successful at project management. It's probably true that just about anybody could get into project management. But I would say that in my travels, I've run across a lot of project managers who they get into the field, uh, they do it as a full-time job, they get to a certain point and then they sort of plateau. And I think that for many of those people, the reasons are because they don't exhibit a lot of the traits that I'm about to talk about today they don't enjoy or they are not passionate about the kinds of things that would take their career to the next level. There's a bit of a pet peeve of mine. I get approached by people all the time who are looking to get into project management and um, they, they, will, they will give me some reasons uh, like, I really think it's a good thing for me because I'm, I'm really well organized and I can organize other people. Um, I like to help people stay on on schedule, you know, like I'll nag them and I'll make sure they finish their tasks on time. Um, really great working with vendors. If there's problems, I'm first one to get on the phone and solve problems. And, and I'm good at solving problems overall. So I, I think project management would be a great job for me. I typically will say to them, well, you might be right, but those are all very surface level type things that, I mean, you probably have observed project managers doing before. But in order to really be passionate about that sort of stuff and to be good at it, there are some underlying traits that we need to talk about. I find that a lot of people will approach project management sort of with this idea that, well, you know, anyone could do it. And, and I said it earlier, I think anyone could get into it, but I don't think just anyone could get really good at it. I, I tend to think of project management uh, as a similar thing to maybe, a, you know, an artist. Right? A project manager or an artist. Um, you know, you look at a sculpture that somebody does and, and you're in awe of, of how amazing um, you know, the sculpture looks. Or, or maybe this, uh, you see an artist and she's amazing with acrylic painting or, or drawing or whatever her medium is. A lot of people will look at the art and they'll say, wow, I could never do that. They appreciate the skill that goes into it. You know, they don't say, well, I've got a pencil, I could probably do the same thing. And yet people tend to do that about project management. They'll say, well, I can make a schedule. I could be a project manager. And uh, I have to have the conversation with them to say, yeah, but uh, there's probably a little more to it than you're thinking. And in order to get really good and to become a senior project manager or even to go beyond that into the executive level of, of project delivery, you kind of have to be passionate about certain things. You have to be wired a certain way in order to be truly successful. So let's talk about some of those traits. First and foremost, the most important, so if you remember any of them today, this is the one I want you to remember. 
the most important trait a person has to have to be very successful as a project manager is they have to have a genuine interest in people. And I'm going I'm to hone in on one of the words I used there, genuine. The only way you're going to get people to do things for you, and that's kind of what a project manager does, they bring a lot of people together to achieve a goal. Um, and they have no formal authority. So in, in order for a project manager to be really good at getting people to all align on the same objective, which is not an easy thing, to agree to how something's going to be done, and then to go do it and do it well, project manager has to have a lot of what I call uh, goodwill currency with those people. They have to have a lot of influence on those people because when the chips are down and you need people maybe to stay late or to work a little faster or to work a little harder or to solve a problem you need those people uh, to view you as a leader that they don't mind following that they don't mind staying a little late or going above and beyond for the only way you're going to do that is to demonstrate to them that you care about them. Having a genuine interest in people, actually wanting to understand what their day job is, right? Many of those people working on your project is something they're doing off the side of their desk. They have a day job. They have a family. They have so many other things going on in their life other than your project. The more interested you are in those things, uh, the more interest that you show, the more people are likely to believe that you see them as a human being, that you appreciate them, and they are more willing to work hard for you if you demonstrate that genuine interest. I spent a lot of time on that one. I think it's very important though, if you're the kind of person who just doesn't like people or would rather, uh, you know, like uh, send emails, uh, then go and talk to people, um, if interaction um, makes you uncomfortable, then, then maybe you might want to think about another career because people is what project management is all about. Another trait that I think is very important is, um, and <laughs> this is where people are going to be thinking, eh, I don't know if I like this. Um, project managers have to genuinely enjoy politics. And right now, I know there's people out there who are recoiling at, at what I just said. Politics, oh my goodness. A lot of people will say to me, no, Jason, politics, I, I don't go for that stuff. I, I leave politics out of the equation. I leave it on the wayside and I just focus on the task at hand. You could tell what I think about that, right? <laughs> but, but to me, politics is not a bad word. Politics is just acknowledging the fact that every human being comes to the table with their own set of, set of objectives. Everybody wants something out of whatever it is that you're doing, uh, and that something is a little different depending on who that person is. Let's just acknowledge that everyone here is a human being. They all have their own objectives. Let's figure out what those objectives are. And if at all possible, we can find a way to navigate through this and, and deliver our project in a way that allows everyone to get most of what they're after, then why the hell not? That's good politics. Politics doesn't have to be evil. It just, it's again, it's just the realization that everyone sitting around the table has their own set of objectives. Figure out what they are and you'll be successful. If you hate politics and you wish everyone would just take their own personal desires and, and set them aside, you're probably going to struggle as a project manager and you most certainly won't get to become a senior project manager and to start to manage some of those larger projects. Another trait that I think is very important for project managers is they need to be a healthy skeptic. If, if being skeptical was beaten out of you at a very young age and you just accept what people tell you at face value, then you're going to have a really hard time doing a good job as a project manager. Uh, and when I say skeptical, I don't just mean when your project team says, oh, everything's great, we're green, that you're not, you know, that you're skeptical about that. Of course you should be. And that's the most obvious uh, place where a project manager should be skeptical. Um, you need to find evidence to back up what people are telling you is true about the project. But I'm also suggesting that you need to be skeptical when your uh, executive sponsor comes to you and says, I want you to build this scope for this amount of money within this time frame. Be skeptical about those three things. 
more often than not, those three things were not derived from some deep analysis. Those items were picked out of the sky. The price they want to pay, the time they think it should take. You need to be skeptical that those three things actually work together. Whenever somebody comes to me, an executive or even a client says, I want this for this much money and this much time, my response is always, we'll see. I'll take it away, we'll analyze it, and I'll let you know whether or not we can do that. Being skeptical about all of those things is just, to me, good project management. Um, I find that the majority of the project managers out there, they've had the skepticism beaten right out of them, and they feel like, well, this person's an executive. They're you know, 10 levels above me in the organization. When they tell me to do a thing, I've just got to go do it. If that's how you feel, and, and that that healthy skepticism is no longer there within you, then you're probably going to struggle as a project manager. Because what will happen is you'll say, yes, ma'am or sir, you'll go away and do whatever it is they asked you to do. You won't achieve your objective uh, because those things were unrealistic to begin with. And nobody's going to be thanking you for it. And you're going to feel like you were set up. So healthy skepticism, very important for a project manager to have. Going sort of hand in hand with that is having a keen interest in the why and how, not so much in the what, right? Um, a lot of project managers will, the very first thing they'll say is, what do you want me to build and by when, right? Those are the two things, what and when. I tend to, to say, you know what, if those are your first questions, let's just put those aside. I mean, a lot of people feel like, oh, I'm a real go-getter. What do you want and when do you want to buy? I'll make it happen for you. I mean, good on you for having that attitude, but Let's put those two things aside for a minute. I would much rather have a PM sitting in front of me who is asking, but why do you want this? And how do you think we should do it? Why and how are much more important questions. When we're kids, we ask why a lot. And our parents at some point probably got totally fed up with us and said, stop asking me why. It's just because, just go do. And we carry that forward in life and, and many of us stop asking why. Uh, and we stop asking how, it's just what and, and by when, right? We feel like we're being good foot soldiers by saying, well, what and by when? And, and we're not supposed to be foot soldiers, we're supposed to be leaders, right? Focusing on why and how, if that's a natural tendency for you, if that hasn't been beaten out of you, then I think you're gonna have an awesome time as a project manager because that is exactly what everybody really needs from you. Also, I think a project manager always has to be playing scenarios and considering possibilities in their heads. One of the things that I find people say to me a lot is, you know, Jason, the whole organization keeps changing. They change their mind about what they want. We're changing how we're doing things right in the middle of the project. I mean, if we could just stop all this change and we could just execute our plan, everything would be just so much better. And I think about those people and I think, I am so sorry that you feel that way because that is life. We live in a constantly changing world. A lot of people who don't have a lot of experience with project management are just getting into it. They have this vision in their head that this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a project plan and we're going to get the project team to execute against that plan, and we're going to deliver on time and on budget, and then we're all going to celebrate. That's a great dream. I, in my 23 years of delivering project manage, man, projects, I have never actually had that happen. There's a famous quote, and I forget who it's attributed. It's attributed to many different people, but uh, the quote goes a little something like this, that no plan survives contact with the enemy. And what that basically means is you can make all the plans you want, but the very moment you you engage the enemy, uh, you have to change your plans because they're not going to behave in the way that you anticipated. Everything's going to be different. A successful project manager actually is okay with that ever-changing landscape. They don't lament the fact that people can't make up their mind or that things keep changing. And if they didn't, if they just would stop changing for a while, then we could get this done. If they're more the kind of person that goes, eh, say la vie. So it changed. Uh, and they're okay with that. Uh, they're not stressed by that. Then they're going to make an awesome project manager. I build my plans. And part of the course that I'm putting together, one of the major points that I make is the process of coming up with the plan, the team building around that is actually the more important thing 
than the actual plan itself because the plan is totally going to need to change on day one when you start executing it. I guarantee it. So a person who's okay with that uh, is going to do very, very well as a project manager. The final thing I would say here is a project manager has to be able to trust themselves to make a decision. And often you'll have to make a decision with very little information. And uh, you may, or I, I wouldn't put it that way. You'll have to make a decision before you have all of the information. You, everything's not going to be perfectly lined up for you every time you have to make a call. And if you want to become a more senior project manager, if, if that's where you want to head, you have to be able to get as much information as available to you in the moment and then make the call and be comfortable with that and live with the fact that you're not always going to get it right. Uh, if you're paralyzed by fear and, and you always have to be right, like if you always have to be right and you're a perfectionist, project management might not be for you. If you're okay with making a mistake because you understand that making a decision, uh, the best informed decision you possibly could make is more important than being right all the time, then you're probably going to be okay. So anyways, I'm going to stop here. I think if you, I've given you enough food for thought. What I want you to do with it is think about the things that I mentioned. Ask yourself, is this really me? And, and if you think it is, and you say, yeah, absolutely, I'm that kind of person. I ask how uh, and why, you know, why all the time, um, you know, and I haven't had that skepticism beaten out of me. And, and I love politics. Then, then, then great, then I'm really excited for you to go on the rest of this journey with me because we've got lots of really great stuff for you. If this video has given you pause and you're thinking, eh, maybe not for me, then that's also good because I see a lot of people get into project management as a profession. They get to a certain level. Probably they do finally make it to PM, like they, they go from junior PM to PM, and, and then they just sort of plateau. And they get very frustrated and they're like, well, I've been a PM for 15 years. Why am I not getting the, the bigger projects? Um, and chances are it's because some of this stuff they're just not passionate about. They don't, they're not passionate about people. They keep lamenting the fact that the world is changing. And, and, and that's why they're not getting the bigger projects because they're just not comfortable enough to be able to take it to the next level. So think about those things. I hope you found this information useful. Uh, if you did and you think other project managers might find it useful too, then what I'd like to ask you to do is to interact with the video a little bit. That will allow YouTube to present this video to more project managers. Take a little trip below the video here. Tell me, did you like the information? Give me a thumbs up. If you didn't and it didn't work for you, then fine. Thumbs down. Either way, fine by me. Leave me a comment in the comment section. Tell me, did this sort of clinch it for you? Did you go, yeah. Totally. You've made me even more excited about project management than I was before. Awesome. I want to hear that. Or even if maybe you, the, this video has maybe potentially stopped you from making a bit of a mistake, you know, let me know. I, I really would like to hear that too. That's the whole reason why I'm doing this video. And if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button. And uh, next to that button, you'll see a little bell icon. If you want to be notified when the next video comes out, go ahead and click that as well. The next video that I have for you, um, which will be coming out next Friday, is all about uh, project uh, compensation for project managers. What are project managers getting paid these days? Thank you for sticking with me on the very first uh, episode. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.